Last episode, it was fill-up time on board Tangaroa. So it's been a hard day today. Um, over the last month, we've been watching Daisy on the boat. I know you've watched videos of her and you can see just how anxious she is and how much she's running around and how she doesn't stop. She just goes bow to stern, bow to stern, bow to stern. Um, we didn't know what to do. People suggested a thunder shirt, that didn't work. People suggested CBD. Um, my back is so wrecked that I just can't walk run her, which is what she needs. And so we made the decision that we need to find her a new home. A lot of people who are moving onto boats, you're gonna have to run into this decision and you're gonna have to make it. It's a tough one. I was being really selfish and wanted to keep Daisy in my life and keep her on the boat, but really, she is a massive coon hound. She just did not do well on this boat. Even if this boat is 78 feet, she didn't do well on it. She was not happy. So I found a awesome home for her. That's um, because it is a hard decision that you may have to make. Um, if you're going to go traveling around different countries or anything, a lot of countries don't allow pets in it. So it was a really hard decision. We dropped her off at our new home today. We cried all the way back. Um, I'm on the boat right now with Maggie and I miss Miss Daisy so much. I'm sitting here on the bow and she's not um, standing on the bow watching me. So yeah, tough decision. Anyways. So here's what do you think about Daisy going to a new home? I don't like her. No. It's tough, eh? Yeah. Think she'll be happier though? Yeah. yeah. It's been almost a month now since Daisy's been at her new home and we've been getting updates via Facebook. Her new mama is amazing and just watching how happy she is has made Blaine and I and the kids believe that we made the right choice. Lane, Izzy, and I were contemplating turning around to go help with the rescue because we were right there. However, we did learn soon enough that there was no injuries, no one was in the car, and it had been there for about five days. We're just heading over to Sydney right now. I'm driving. Lane's eating chips. Um, again, our generators are down. We have none. So we're heading over there to plug in for two nights. And I've got a great deal on right now. It's what's it called? Doc Dine and Shop or something. The funny part is Dr. Bonnie Henry just came on and she basically shut down everything. Restaurants are still okay, but masks are mandatory and you're only allowed to hang out with the people in your bubble. We're very lucky that we live with my sister and her husband and my parents. So we've got a pretty big COVID bubble to hang out in, but we're just taking the boat around there. Um, everybody's coming over for dinner tomorrow night at the marina. So we'll do a video over there. Um, we're gonna go set the crab traps and get some crab and steak. It's gonna be awesome! Ah! Sorry, I'm just trying to pay attention driving here, see?
plates, Tim. I know you got your mouth full of chips. Tell us what happened this morning when you were coming out to the boat. There were two orcas swimming between our boat and the uh, ferry dock. Really? Yep, big ones. And they weren't just coming up and diving, they were swimming on the surface a lot. Are they the transients or local whales? I don't know. Probably the transients, there's only two of them. How, um, you said they had a big fin. Really big, probably about five feet out of the water. And then what happened after you got to the boat? Um, saw a big sea lion uh, swimming across the bay, very winded. <laughs> what if they chased him right into the inlet? No, but he was tired. Oh, that poor thing. Puffing and puffing, eh? <laughs> so Blaine doesn't like traveling at night and I get a little bit stressed out, especially when you've got the radar like this. And then you got big ass boat like right there. And you've got land right there, which you can't see, but look how close I am to land on the radar. But I really had to get out of this ferry's way. Lane's taking some video of it right now. We're just trying to get over to Sydney, but it gets so dark so early. So one of our favorite things on the boat, right Izzy, is what? Um, sitting by a fireplace. Sitting by the fire. I think we're one of the few boats that we actually put a fire pit on, right? But you're still cold. It's because we're um, stirring into the wind right now, hun. You okay? No. <laughs> no, I know it's cold. But we're at Sydney Pier. We came in in the dark. Blaine did an awesome job spinning this boat right into the spot, which is funny because, oh, you can't see it. The brake wall is seriously right there. So the fact that he spun it right around was perfect. Oh, and he's got a beer and never offered me any. Oh, I would have thought you would have already had one. No, I was talking to Krista. Oh. What would you like? There's a white claw in the fridge. Hi. It's always nice to be plugged into power, eh, Blaine? Yes, it is. <laughs> Josh is coming to pick you up in about half an hour. Do you not want to eat here? Nah. I had sausage ready. No? I'm just cold. I don't want to jump into bed. Oh, are you that tired? Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe into the hot tub first. At home. Probably. <laughs> you did a good job with it, Blaine. Thank you. What are you looking at? Well, it's... It's like glowing red on the top. Look at it. Is it supposed to glow red like that? Yep. Okay. R2-D2 is doing well. What are you looking at with the instruction sheet? Mix. Not just where it should be burning. It didn't take long for Blaine to figure out how to make the adjustment, so no ash was built up on the window. So I like going to the docks. The only problem is marinas have crappy Wi-Fi. Wanted to watch a Netflix movie. Couldn't even download it. Couldn't even watch it. Um, most marinas are like that. So Blaine and I were just discussing what to do with Wi-Fi and internet. And Blaine, what's the plan? Well, ideally we'll get a, a what's it called, a bullet uh, M, and that's an antenna on top of the boat that'll pick up the dock Wi-Fi regardless of where we are on the dock. And then failing that, when we're out at anchor somewhere, we'll get a, um, what's it, a rocket stick, I think it's called? A rocket stick or a TELUS hub? Hub, yeah. Or something? We already have great Wi-Fi at the mooring, though. Yep. So yep. what are we doing for that? Uh, that we have a um, both Ubiquity products. We have a Nanobeam AC that sits on the dock at Portside Marina that beams uh, internet out to us. But it's and not Wi-Fi, is it? It's Wi-Fi. Oh. It's just not accessible by standard Wi-Fi receivers, so you can't pick it up with your laptop. It's a proprietary Wi-Fi. And then we have a rocket AC, which is on the boat with an omnidirectional antenna on the roof that picks up that antenna and transmits back to it. Awesome. And it's super fast. And I love our Wi-Fi at the mooring is actually faster than our house. Yeah. Yeah. I can watch Netflix at the mooring. <laughs> I can't watch Netflix here at Sydney Marina. No. Nope. Port of Sydney. No. Nope. No. So I've got people coming over for dinner tonight. My dad, Mary Lynn, Kristen, Dave, because really that's our COVID bubble. That's all we've got. Um, it's really cold out here. We're in Sydney Harbor. I just went to Sydney Bakery and got Blaine some apple fritters, which were amazing. They're fresh, they actually had to get them out of the kitchen. 
Um, so right now I told the guys, or I told the family that I'm gonna go get some crab for tonight, which means I gotta go over to Sydney Spit, which is just over there. It's about, um, I'm guessing maybe 15 minutes in the tender. It won't be that long, but I also have to get the crab trap baited. And I went to Fairway Market, which is just up the street here, and got some of the crab's favorite food. Check this out. It, oh, ah, look at all that stuff. So really, Fairway's Market, it's actually called Crab Bake, $1.99 for that whole bag of chicken. And I'm gonna cover it with some really good stinky oil and we'll see if we can get some crab today for dinner. Interesting coming back this afternoon to pick this up. Maybe I'll send the kids. Yeah, that's this is some slimy butt chicken. Look at it. it's chicken legs. They're really just slimy, but they make great crab bait. So you can see what I've done here. Actually, let me flip again. Crab bait. So I've got the crab in there, and then again I used some of this oil on top. Procure. So we'll see how it works. It's been a while since Dad and Mary Lynn have been out of the house because of COVID, so just trying to get them some awesome crab for dinner, lots of butter and garlic and everything, so we'll see how it goes. Well, that was a cold ride. My fingers are frozen. I'm gonna have to go home and get some mitts because holy cow, that was cold. The joys of winter sailing. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go pick up that crab chop in about three hours. It's 10 o'clock now, we've got some stuff to do on the boat. Josh is bringing the car down, which is awesome. He just got his driver's license and I'm so thankful because it's really nice having another driver in the house. When he's coming down, we'll go hit a Tim Hortons because I'm a little bit addicted to the steam tea. We got some stuff to haul off the boat because we're at a dock right now. So you always make, uh, take advantage of that. And then again, I'll probably go pick up the crab trap at about three o'clock. So fingers crossed that those crabs love that chicken. I need to get mitts, but I went right past this huge Navy ship, like really close. Yeah, I got the crab trap out, so this is fingers crossed. Remember, we used some chicken, so we'll have to see if it works. They took all the chicken or we were robbed. I'm not sure which. No crab. Well, I didn't get any crab, which made me sad, but I think maybe I left it down too long because all the chicken was gone. So those crabs are so smart. They come in, they grab the chicken, then they leave. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it down, which I did just now. And I'm just gonna go hang at the beach for a while and maybe do a quick little walk. And then I'll come grab it on my way back to Sydney. I better phone my husband tell him I'm going to be a bit longer um, than I planned. 
Well, this sucks. I don't think I'm going to go for a walk. The docks are gone. Where are the docks gone? This is Sydney Island. Actually, I think my sister mentioned something about Sydney Island closing um, for, I don't know, the First Nations do a hunt or something. I'm not sure. But look, docks are gone. There's no dinghy dock. And, I, and our engine is seized, so I can't really pull up the engine right now. It's not too happy. Well, that's a bummer. I guess I'll just hang out here somewhere and wait for the crab to enter the trap. Okay, this is gonna be my last chance to see if there's any crab for dinner. We've only got one so far, which isn't enough for six people, but we'll see what happens. I just put the trap just outside the break wall here, so let's see if we catch, I don't know, at least two more would be nice, because then that's like half a crab each. And I gotta phone my sister to bring some butter and garlic, but we'll see what happens. my crotch okay hey buddy you have to go you're too small I know but she's pretty cute though yeah you're pretty small okay so yeah so he's too small okay. but he is a male there right now we've got him See right there? He is a male though, so he's too small, so he's gonna go back. Say bye-bye, bye-bye. Okay, now we're in trouble. We only have one. In that trap was one small male and one small female, which I chucked both overboard. And now Dad and Mary Lynn are coming down the dock on their scoots, and dinner's gonna be served. Yay! So we just left Port of Sydney. Um, we had a great dinner last night, but we just had steak and corn. Because we had no crab, we only had one crab, and I sent them home with dad. So, Blake's driving, maybe. And we're just heading around. What rock is this? That's Dock Island. What is it? Dock Island. Dock, Dock Island. We're just going to go around to the BC Ferries. It's always a bit tight in our wheelhouse. And again, we've got the old plans. Check out that. Isn't that cool? Those are the old plans of this boat up on the wall. And we're having our favorite lunch vegetables and dip and that's the green sauce the special green sauce from the root cellar and you can see where we are right there just heading around Dock Island we're going to take a basically a 90 degree turn to port right now and head in by the ferry terminal I just love watching trying to find logs in the water because if you see birds sitting on the water standing on the water you know there's a log underneath them that's how we find dead heads around here and in British Columbia especially around here Benny Run there is a lot of logs in the water. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and join in next time when we give you an update on the renovations.